What's going on everybody? In this one I'm going to show you how to calculate spring rates when you know the loading and especially arrow loading and we get started infusing our new splitter. Alright, so first thing we want to do is figure out how much the springs were compressing with our old setup. Um, under our AI trim setup, we can kind of assume that based off the CFD that we did and the angle we had to run the wing to balance it out was about 500 pounds of arrow load on the front axle at around about 100 miles an hour. Um, so we'll say arrow is about 500 pounds. And the corner weights for my car, 819 front and left, 796, 665, and 613. So in order to simplify this, we're just going to pick one corner. We're going to round it a little bit. Also, the two important caveats I'm going to mention right now are we are not taking into account unsprung weight which will be your wheel, your brake rotor, your hub, stuff like that. Um, because that weight doesn't go towards compressing the spring, but again, we're kind of trying to simplify it uh, here. And then the other thing is if you have a car that has an inboard mounted spring, there's gonna be some sort of leverage ratio. Again, we're just going for spring compression to get an idea. So that's all we're looking at right now. Um, so again, just taking the, let's just use the front left for this example. So 800 pounds, um, 500 across the whole front axle is 250 a corner, which brings us up to 1,050 pounds. Currently we have 550 pound springs on the front. So 1,050 divided by 1,050 divided by 550 is about 1.9 inches of compression. We just so happen to have 750 pound springs sitting in the corner from an old job. So we know we want stiffer springs, that's obvious. Again, the CFD that we did, we know that the new wing and the new splitter are gonna put more error loading on the car. So we're going to assume that the splitter will put about 800 pounds across the front axle. So about 400 a corner. So we're using the same corner weights. So let's use 800 for the front left corner plus 400 because the, the new splitter remember is about 800 across the front axle. So about 400 per corner, which gives us 1200. So then that 1,200 pounds divided by the 750 springs that we already have is 1.6 inches of compression. So that's pretty good. It's stiffer even with the greater air loading. Um, we kind of just got lucky on that one. Um, but you can see the math and kind of play with your springs from there. So that's a 36 percent increase over our uh, I'm sorry our 550 pound spring so now what spring do we need in the rear right now we have 300 pound spring in the rear plus a 36 percent stiffness is 408 so we'll probably end up with 400s in the rear and the 750s in the front so that's a quick, easy way to kind of get us, get us in the ballpark. Now, if you are a suspension guru, please leave a comment or shoot me an email or something. Suspension is not my forte. We're more in the composites and arrow side of thing. But again, this is simplified a little bit to get you in the right track and keep you in the ballpark when upping spring rates while increasing the arrow load. So I hope this kind of helped you guys out. 
All right, so now that we figured out spring rates, the next thing we want to do is figure out what our current ride height is. So I'll show you what we do. Above each wheel well, you can see we did the ones in the back as well. And dead center on your front bumper, front bumper beam, and we also did the rear bumper as well. You want to take a note of what your current ride height is. Now we know the car handles good, feels good, has a good alignment and everything. So when we lift the car up, change the springs, this allows us to get it easily back to the same ride height. The other advantage of doing this is when we do our splitter, we can go ahead and just mock it up. And as long as we jack the car up level, we know if we build the, split, the splitter level, everything will be good once we drop it to the ground. And for example, if the front mark comes up 10 inches, we know ground height is at 10 inches. If we want a three inch ground height, we would just build the splitter to be at 13 inches. So I hope that kind of makes sense for everybody. So we're finally ready to lift the car. We got all of our measurements and everything. So once you start tinkering with arrow, especially once you make yourself side skirts, jacking the car starts to become pretty difficult. So one of the easiest things to do is make a jacking lug. Basically a tube welded to the chassis of the car. Make some sort of extension that slides in and then you can just jack it up from here. My particular setup, I have to lift the front up, slide the jack under the, the front of the subframe. Then I can take the jack under the center and lift up the whole side of the car. If I had to do it over, I would probably do something off of the frame rail more in the middle so that first jack just lifts up the whole side of the car. So think about that if you're going to be doing something like this, but otherwise it works pretty good. So we just got the car in the air and one of the things I really like doing in these vlogs is sharing with you guys um, experiences that just over time I kind of accumulated I guess. Uh, one of the things I should have spent money on my first season of racing was a battery impact. These things have gotten so good and very reasonably priced. If you're getting into racing or you don't have one of these, definitely get one. I'll put a link to this one in the video description below. I just ended up on Ryobi because I had other Ryobi power tools so the battery crosses all over. I'm sure they're all good but a battery impact saves you so much time and hassle while you're at the track. They are more than worth it. Alright so the first thing we want to do is kind of go over our current springs. So these ones just happen to be iBox. Honestly, not sure what that ZM is. If you if you know, leave a comment. Um, but this 0800 is an eight inch spring. That that 0 .250 is two and a half inch inside diameter. And the last four are your spring rate, so 550. So like mentioned earlier, we have a 550 pound spring, two and a half inch diameter, and an eight inch tall spring height. Moving to the rear, these ones are, let's see if I can see it, I believe they are Hypercos. Looks like any markings kind of got rubbed off on them or dirtied or the sticker came off or whatever. But anyway, so usually they have markings on the top. And this one does right there. It's upside down, but you can see that is a 300 pound spring. So what I need to do now is just measure the spring height, um, double check the inside diameter, and order up those new springs for these because we already have the used 750s going on the front. Alright, so we're going to switch gears a little bit and start our splitter. The reason we're going to start the splitter is I ordered the springs, they're on the way. Doing all the fluids and stuff is like a one day job, but making and mounting the splitter is much more involved. So we're going to throw this one in this episode as well. So uh, we're going to get started on that. All right, so a few people asked me how I mount the splitter. So you're going to see that right now. We're going to mount that just to double check any sizes or fitments. I know we're going to have to change up 
underneath because the sway bar on my card gets super close to it and with the bigger thicker splitter it'll actually contact it so we might have to change up the size a little bit but um, yeah let's get to that second mount because we're just kind of mocking it up but that's how quickly and easily the splitter can go on and then from there just a few Zeus fasteners and the bumper goes on all right so I'll show you what I was kind of trying to figure out was you can see so here's my sway bar right here comes down and in I have to make room for my you know radiator and intercooler tubing um, this is the inlet pipe from the turbo but you can almost see that little bit of a shiny spot right there where the sway bar because it's unloaded oops, the suspensions unloaded right now so the sway bar is kind of up but when these come up and it pivots it actually swings down so that extra half inch in thickness that I'm going to make the new one will actually have some interference right there so I'm actually probably going to stop the new splitter short and then just make that almost the add-on piece or I'm gonna have to change up I'm gonna have to change up something about how I mount it so um, yeah we'll, we'll figure something out though it shouldn't be too difficult so here we laid up the template that we made back in episode 2 I think it was and you can see those marks that I was talking about so right here is where the sway bar was actually already rubbing and if you look parallel where it rubs is just in front of where it's almost straight across so I'm pretty much just going to cut the new template straight across so it'll just be basically a here forward splitter and then this will just be a little add-on piece because it'll be easier to make it fit around the sway bar and mount and all that stuff separately all right so in the last clip we figured out where we're going to cut our template since we're going to lose about this much of the splitter we're going to give ourselves that extra inch. A couple episodes back we mentioned we're only going up to about 11 inches. We're allowed 12. So what we're going to do is just take our template and just slide it one inch forward. There's our extra inch. Simple as that. Um, so yeah. And then the other unique thing we're going to do is double up our core thickness. Core thicknesses in composites, think of it almost like an like a I-beam or a truss. It doesn't double the strength it raises the strength exponentially so with a very small weight increase you can end up with something much much stiffer I hope that kind of makes sense so that'll be new for us to try out um, and again that's kind of why we race and test stuff on our own car so when we put parts out there for you guys we kind of know how to behave and what it does let's get cutting uh, you're going to see us cut the core material and then, yeah, so let's uh, time lapse through it. All right, so we finally got them all cut out. Uh, so here is basically the outline of our new splitter. This thing's gonna be a monster, so I'm super excited to kind of get this done. So yeah, now that the core is done, we have to uh, kind of radius the edge a little bit, and then it's on to cutting the carbon and doing the actual layup and infusion. All right, so we're gonna bust out this hot wire gun that we got years ago. We used it a handful of times, and since we're gonna be taking off quite a bit of material, we're pretty much gonna hot wire our rough shape and then take some sandpaper to kind of smooth it and finalize it. So, just so you can kind of see how it works. It's a little bit slow, but it should be easier to get close to our net shape with this 
rather than trying to sand all of this and just turning it into a giant mess of dust particles. All right, so I bailed on the hot wire gun already. Um, it just wasn't working with this. It's the first time we used it with this core material. It was extremely slow and was just kind of making a bunch of smoke. So we're going a little bit old school. Just a hacksaw blade. We're just going to lop off a majority of it and then, you know, smooth it out and finalize our curve that way. All right, so we're beveled the whole way. We did a pretty aggressive bevel on this one. All right, so one's done. We gotta do the other side, then on to layup. Alright, I stopped the time lapse real quick. I'm going to show you a little trick using a piece of infusion tube, almost like a, like a stethoscope. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the end up to the microphone. We'll see if it comes across, but it's an easy way to try and figure out uh, where your leaks are coming from. So we know we have one up in this corner. We'll see if this transfers to the microphone. Maybe, I'm not sure. But you can hear how it gets louder or less loud. So anyways, that might be a little uh, trick that might help you out. All right guys, it looks like I'm spending a disproportionate amount of time on the right hand side and I'll show you why. It happened under time lapse, so you may not have caught it, but when I was loading this into the oven, I hit a bracket and it came down and hit the mold. And usually when that happens, it'll put puncture like a little hole wherever it kind of hits. I didn't quite see it until I started the infusion and you can see little tiny bubbles going up. So we had one here and then looking further we had one all the way up here so you probably earlier again under time lapse saw me spraying something this clear chip guard this goes back to my bodywork days it's kind of like a clear heavy rubberized coating if you're not sure where a hole may be as long as it's a little tiny pinhole 
you can almost just give it a coating just to kind of reseal it and stop you know those little tiny leaks sometimes sometimes this will definitely help you out of a jam All right, so it's the next day. Uh, I just let it sit overnight because I did the splitter at the end of the night. We're going to demold it and see how it turned out and then try the other half. Looks like I got a little bit of air bubbles coming in. If you remember when I said we had like a little bit of a leak, um, you can see some of this like tracing here. It doesn't look too bad. And since it's such a thick laminate and literally this faces the ground, I think we're fine, so, yep, let's get it demolded. Alright, so a little bit of an issue on this one. You can see how the epoxy didn't make it all the way through the laminate. I don't know if that's because the bubbles were kind of coming up right around here, making it through the part. I might get lucky because I'm probably going to be cutting this bit out to put our tunnels in anyways. So yeah, so a little bit of a learning process doing a double thick core like we just did. Um, may have also been me making that little mistake, knocking that thing off and putting a hole in the bag. So yeah, composites, as long as I've been doing them, I still run into stuff every now and then. So yeah, we'll see what we get. And on to the second one. Oh, if you want to watch me do the second half, just rewind the video a few minutes and watch it over again because it's the same exact thing. So we're going to bang out the second half and then keep moving on to mounting. All right, so this is how lucky we got on this one. Here's our template for our small outer curved tunnel which is going to land somewhere right about here and then the tunnel carries over so we're actually going to trim out the little bit that didn't get infused so yeah got super lucky on this one but that's kind of why we you know test stuff out on our own car like this car right here is pretty much my first attempt or first shot at pretty much everything you know first first fenders First doors, our first um, apex, or I'm sorry, Fulcrum 14 wing is on it. That's our first Apex 15, uh, first one-off custom airbox. First time we tried carbon intercooler ducts. These are actually pretty cool. I did these a while ago, but you can see the carbon intercooler duct, uh, or I'm sorry, end tank. I've been calling it. Um, and then here's our one-off. You know airbox so yeah so we kind of got lucky on this one um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna call this video here I'm gonna go make the other half so that way the next video will be mounting our wing mounting video ran kind of long so yeah I think that's it for this one and we'll see you guys in the next one. Oh, if you're still watching this late please subscribe see ya